but we still live in Austin. And then now we live in a small town okay. that doesn't really have a gym. And one of the things I think is when you go through menopause, you want to lift heavy. And when you don't have, you know, there's a gym here, but it is a small town gym. And then COVID hit. And mm. so I knew I still wanted to lift heavy and I'm fairly small. So for me to jump from 15 to 20 pounds is a big, huge jump, yeah. especially with my upper body. And I tried to find 17 pound weights and I couldn't find them forever. And that was one of the things I had thought, well, maybe Tuttle let me do that because I can control my weight. And that was one of the things I really found I liked about it because I could go up by one pound. And when you're sort of playing, you know, and especially at my size, going up two pounds when I'm doing arms on one side is a lot of weight. Yeah, it is. So it was really great for that. Time to hit the gym. Better do it smart. Get your own coach. There where you are. Start the day right. There in your home with the smartest gym in the world. Ready, set, go. Smart head, smart bar, smart training. There you are, customizing it right. AI, form and vibe. Super set will show you what it's all about. It's a total workout. Well, welcome to the Super Set Podcast, episode 23. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. Hi. <laughs> Why'd you wiggle your eyebrows at me? I don't know. <laughs> Can I wiggle my eyebrows at my husband? Sure. I just <laughs> it caught me off guard. So. <laughs> Sorry if I'm out of breath. I just did a tonal. Not only did you do a tonal, but guys, guys, Tom went from go big or go home right into, right directly into four weeks to fat loss i think kate hacked my profile (laughs) and just those are those are my two options it was four weeks to fat loss or prenatal yoga (laughs) those are the two options kate gave me you think it was kate yes i don't know i think it's one of the data scientists back behind the scenes they were like ah." (laughs) so i'm like i guess it's four weeks to fat loss (laughs) So, so, yeah, it's understandable you're out of breath, is yeah. my point. <laughs> well, and then you wiggled your eyebrows at me. <laughs> so, that always gets my heart heart rate up. So, my, my whoop is going crazy. <laughs> See it? You don't have one. I know. <laughs> my whoopee. <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah. Enough of that. Uh-huh. Hey, we should probably tell people about the tonal contest, because it's getting close to wrapping up. It is. So, uh uh, we're giving away a tonal, um, and by we, I mean tonal was kind enough to supply the tonal and yeah. then use us as a mechanism to give it away. So technically, if you're doing the algebra on that, tonal's giving it away. Thank True. You, thank you, tonal. Yes. But uh, it's uh, but you get the tonal and you get the smart accessories and, and you get a, a membership for a year, a whole year, a whole year. And uh, so maybe you're like, well, I've got a tonal. Like okay, but That's, like it's fair. That's you could fair. like a mat, you could give it to a friend. You and could you'd look really good you yeah you would shame them with the gift no like, we don't want to shame people because then they That's would not be a like friend. they would be like my gift is so inadequate and then you would get crazy gifts from them <laughs> for like the next five years they would just like return you a sports car the next year right something like that yeah. so this is the this is the end game here yeah. so um and uh the way it works is you go to the clipout.com slash win a tonal and you purchase entries. Yep. You can entry start at like as little as five bucks and 100 percent of the proceeds since tonal was kind enough to donate all of the money. Every single nickel goes directly to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Greater Bay Area. So um, all your money goes to a good cause. We can't even touch it. Nope. That's the beauty of the website that we use. Yes. Is that it picks the winner. Yes. Because so that have, is too much pressure. We don't have any control over pressure. who wins. We just say pick a winner and it goes bloop. It pulls one out of a hat. Yeah. And uh, and then and Make-A-Wish already has access to the, to the money. Yep. Like we don't even access the money. So That's it's right. completely above board, super trustworthy. Nothing we can do to to be weird or to, to be to screw it up yeah because that's the more likely thing that would happen definitely is we and by we i mean me <laughs> would screw it up so um so anyway uh go once again the clipot.com slash win a tonal swing on by there and support a good cause and or maybe you could have two tonals and you don't have to worry about your loved one you don't have to share you don't have to share anymore yeah just get over there 
No more partner work. I mean, you can do a partner workout, but now you can do them on separate tonals. Yeah. How you, about that? You can take the new one and give them the used one. Yeah. How about that? So uh, anyway, uh, what pray tell do you have in store for people this week? Well, uh, I know this is going to surprise you, but uh, tons of tonal news. That seems appropriate. Yeah. We're going to talk about the coaches in the news. We're going to talk about tonal in the news. We've got some new uh, programs and workouts to cover. We also have a celebrity sighting and we also um, have new features to discuss. Awesome. Well, before we get to all that, shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, wherever you're getting a podcast from, you can find us. And while you're there, be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. And you can also, if you'd be so kind while you're there, maybe leave us a review. So well, that would be nice. People that come along after you, if they're trying to figure out if we're worth their time, uh, they will, they will f- think we are until they get here and find out otherwise. Uh, <laughs> Help us trap people. That's what we're asking. <laughs> right. And uh, you can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash superset podcast. While you're there, like the page and join the group. It's just a great way to stay up to date on things throughout the week. And uh, I think that's everything. Okay. Let's dig in, shall we? Let's do it. The Tonal Blog, which is always a great place to go. It really is. They have all sorts of like tips and tricks and, and good ways to use your tonal yeah inspirational stories and uh uh they have seven tonal features members can't live without yeah well i mean the the digital weight for sure like that's the best part of tonal it's like so obvious that you don't even think to mention i wouldn't even think to put it on a list i totally agree right because it is tonal it's almost like it has arms (laughs) like well yeah well yeah i use it right that's yeah (laughs) But that was that was reason number one. Sure. And then there's resistance at the touch of a button. But like you, you know, it's just like it's so simplified because right. you can't you can do it and then you you stop, you take the weight off, you put the weight back on, just boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I don't know what you touch, but I think I liked it. <laughs> and then number three is virtual group workouts, which are tons of fun. And there was one this weekend for Make-A-Wish. Yeah. And then there's Tonal's Game Changing Spotter. Like, for real. I can't... I mean, that's amazing to be able to lift heavy and not have to worry that it's going to come crashing down totally. your neck and kill you because it will It will be like, no, I gotcha. And you don't have to ask some weirdo at the gym to help you out. Yeah. Movement replacements. So if you can't do a move, they give you other opportunities. I did that just the other day. What did you switch? The... Is it the iso split squat and you're pulling on something and like uh, iso split squat pal off pull that's it <laughs> i was like first off that name's too long right like that's I'm that's like, why it made you mad i'm like that's not a name that's a russian novel <laughs> like like to- like like workout moves shouldn't have a subplot that goes on too long i well, like i got are... halfway through and i just lost interest and then <laughs> and then i tried it and i'm like i can't even do it and I'm like this is a waste of everyone's time okay give me a different move so what did you switch it out for i don't know oh i think something all of them were like variations on that theme yeah you know yeah this is the first time i've ever done it right because i was like wait i'm supposed to be able to hit something and get out of this bullshit and i'm like <laughs> so i'm like what do i hit and so it looked to me because they gave me like four options and uh and like each option this was my assumption knowing nothing about working out okay each option looked progressively easier um I don't know because I don't know what they had there, but sure. it's possible. But it looked, each one looked to me on the surface like they'd be less demanding because the last one was just, it was an 85 year old woman showing you how to do it. Oh, okay. No, that's not true. But but it was like, but it, it seemed pr- by the end I was like, well, that doesn't even look like well, that's what, worth what, doing. What did, you, what did you choose? I was doing basically the same thing, but I think I was standing up instead okay, of. Okay. So yes, uh, it, the, the split squat obviously is going to be harder because you're holding your own weight. Right. And, and I just kept standing, falling over and I'm like, this is dumb. Yeah, and the yeah. standing takes the balance out of it, so yeah. that that does make it easier. And and by easier, it's it's the perioceptive easier. So in other words, how you move in your space or your balance. So it's it's the move. You're still doing the move, right? Yeah. But you're not you're not holding yourself steady while you do it. Is the difference? That's what makes yeah, it harder. That was like the next one. So I was like, well, that seems like of these, this is 
Like I wasn't trying to make it too easy. Because there's one that's like kneeling. Yeah. And there's one, and I don't know what the other one would be. That's why I was curious. Yeah. So I don't know what the other, because like there's a kneeling split squat, or there's a kneeling paloff press, and then uh, I don't know what the other one would have been. Maybe I did kneeling. Or maybe it was half kneeling. Maybe that was the other I don't know. But I did, but I did like the, like the next one. Like okay. Did, you know, because I was like, I just was assuming that was, it was starting like this okay this is the hardest one this is the next hardest this is you know yeah so that was my i don't know if that's true or not no no i don't I know if they were easier or they're they're easier to do you know and, it's like and here's something that i don't think that they really said about the 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 move replacement i don't yeah. know if people know this but you know how like when you hit the thing and like when you get to the end of it, it goes boop boop yeah you know does it yeah when you replace a move yeah it's a sad trombone yeah, so <laughs> I was like, I think, I think I'm feeling a little judged. <laughs> no, no. The idea of it is to not feel judged. The idea of it is so that if for whatever reason you have an injury or or you don't have good balance, like you yourself, just have to snuff on it. Yeah, yeah, totally, then, yeah. then you can do another one. Yeah. Uh, then item number six up for bid was next level progress tracking, and they do have some amazing tracking abilities. I absolutely love it. Uh, the extensive library of content is number seven yep. and they do have an extensive library they do and it's, it just keeps growing it does yeah. every week i uh, it's it's interesting some of the things on the list especially at the beginning like they like how we were talking they seem so obvious right yeah. like and it's it, it was remind i was telling you this this morning about a, another podcast i was listening to talking about i'm weird the history of candid camera yeah we got deep and how at the end of it they were like the show when the show first started they had trouble because at candy camera it was like the first prank show from like the 50s right and like they would trick people and it was like five or six years before they figured out to let people in on the trick like haha you were on tv the whole time this was all a big joke and and that's when the show became a hit and like nowadays it just seems you're just like well, so obvious it's so obvious you're like oh, wait it took somebody six years to think of that but like nope nobody but it had, had done never it been before. done and that's kind of what what tonal's like right like it's totally. like nobody had done it before and now that it's there and you're using it, you're like, well, of course it would be like this. But but there was no of course. They had to think of it. Yeah. Well, and I think that's a great reason that, that Tonal produces all this wonderful content on their blog is to help people come across it and, and dig a little deeper. Because at first glance, people see... Um, a device that hangs on your wall and they assume it's just like the mirror. Right. Like that's their first impression. Or they think it's like one of those old janky pulley machines. Yeah. Yeah. And they and then they don't understand how it's different. And yeah. so, yeah. And then while we're talking about the the blog, yeah. uh they had a, a little tips on how to still use tonal when you're working out on the road. Yeah, and um they specifically below list a whole bunch of brand new places that you can go to get your tonal on while you're traveling. Look at that. Yeah. So Santa Monica, Austin, San Francisco, uh, L.A., Beverly Hills, Malibu, uh, East Palo Alto, um, Kapalawa. I don't know. I probably didn't say that right. And Scottsdale, Maui and Virginia and Chicago. How about that? Here's another tip. If you're on the road and you can't find a hotel that has a tonal. Right. Um. Go into a Nordstrom's and just hide in the bathroom until they close. They'll let you use and it. And then you and, don't have to hide. Well, no, but you didn't get it to yourself the whole night. You can go. You can go to the to the bedding department and oh, just okay. sleep there. Sleep there, and, and then, then wake up the next day. Get some new jammies. Do, do a tonal. Yeah. Right, and then and then hit the orange Julius on your way out the door. Uh, that's not a bad idea. You yeah. could also grab some of those yummy pretzels. Yeah, oh. I mean, you know, you'll probably get arrested, but you'll be in great shape. That's. That's true, but only not if you only get to do it once. So um, I don't know. I don't know that this is a good idea, Tom. Why do you Kinda... always crap on my ass? Because <laughs> somebody has to. <laughs> <laughs> because the tonal legal department reached out. <laughs> and they were like, can you please crap on his idea? <laughs> please? <laughs> Look who's talking about tonal. We're starting to see tonal pop up in more and more news outlets. It seems like every week, it's just a little bit more. Wired.com. That's a big site. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it it had a review of the tonal home gym. Sure did. 
they uh, they go into in depth about um, you know obviously it's connected fitness so right. they wanted to to get an idea of what it was like and so they kind of walk through how it's how it's the same as mirror in some ways in that it's a wall mounted device and right. that's pretty much and that's where it the ends. end of it yeah. um, and then where it differs um, and then they talk about how how it's different yeah so um they 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 weren't really sure about the whole cable thing i think that this was a person who needed to get a little bit more information sure um but they uh were very excited about it once they tried it and they they got all of the good option you know the good benefit of using the tonal and they've loved that it had a whole bunch of different options that you could do yeah um also they loved that they could work out at home which I think a lot of people do that you because you get to work out more often typically, right. um, and uh, I think that another thing that was it stood out to me about the article was that this person expected an easy workout right. because they were a person who works out at CrossFit and oh, like okay. they're all the time yeah. working out, um, so they were like, "Oh, this will be easy peasy," and yeah. I will say I feel like one of the most consistent things you hear about tonal from people that work out all the time that consider themselves gym rats is that's not gonna be enough for me is that and that when they use it they're like oh that's a real workout Mm -hmm. like they're stunned Mm -hmm. that it actually they walk away feeling like they actually worked out i agree i uh, i kind of wish that there were uh, a way to get people that i know personally to try out you know i don't necessarily live near them so it's not right. something i can go do and make them try it out yeah. because i i think that once i think typically once people try it out they're like oh yeah i was surprised yeah, t- yeah. absolutely and then uh, not doesn't mention tonal specifically, but tonal adjacent uh, medium dot com had an interesting article about the number one myth women have about working out. It's yeah. a miss myth. <laughs> Mary it is. Smith. It is. And it's and it's all about that women are, are very worried, afraid of uh, bulking up. And right. so they tend to not lift heavy because of that. But the thing is, the way that women um, are designed you know how how we are mm-hmm. from a biologic standpoint um we don't have the ability to bulk up easily right. I, mean, I mean women can work hard at bulking up sure. if that's what they want to do yeah um, but it takes a lot of work like you're gonna see it ha- it's not just like one day you wake up and you look like she hulk right it's you'll you you'll see that progression and you can choose different workouts if if that concerns you exactly i think the other thing when people have that it's it's typically a oh, a female fear of like of bulking up right that it's like if it was that easy to bulk up more guys would would look like that well like if if, if it was just like oh four workouts and suddenly you're jacked i, I you know i do kind of understand this though because like as a person who is like like even if i weigh like at the, the my goal weight on a perfect day mm-hmm. okay I still look stocky like I am from a stocky background of people and right. and like I am never going to have long lean muscles because it's not the way I'm built right now the reason that I feel like I'll say is that I think women who think that they think that they're going to um, book like, up because they're already kind of boxy, like gonna myself. Con- <laughs> they're going to convert the stockiness yeah. to, to muscle. Yeah. yeah, because we're not, like, women like me don't necessarily, like, lean down to the point of, like, have, like, the way, like, you think that you want to look. In my head, the way uh, a typical woman is, like, I would like long, lean muscles that's never going to be a thing for right. me. I can be fit and I can be strong um, and, and I won't bulk up like to a point that I'm uncomfortable with, but I also am never going to be like long and yeah. sinewy. That's not a thing. Right. So I think that I think that people get a little confused by those those things. Yeah. But also those changes aren't permanent. Like even that's if true. You, even if you were to feel like you overcorrected and now you're like. That's, just, a, that's a good point. You know, just sit on the couch for a couple of weeks. You'll be right back to where you started. <laughs> have, but, but have a couple right. bags of Doritos. You're right. It's not easy to 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 lose weight lose fat gain muscle and gain muscle to the point that like right. it's super like noticeable yeah like hy- hypertrophy i believe they call it look at that fancy word yeah yeah coaches in the news so people uh who love coach pablo <laughs> not just fans of cheetahs i'm one of them yeah <laughs> uh he's uh 
in a new documentary. Yeah. That's uh, looking for some money on Indiegogo. Yeah. So it's a really cool thing. They're they're fundraising to do this documentary. It's called Baloney, a queer male burlesque documentary. Uh, so I'm not sure if some of you have seen if you're friends with Coach Pablo or maybe you've seen other posts about it. Um, but they he's part of this queer male burlesque group. And um, and so they're they're having a documentary made about it. And okay. and uh, it's it looks amazing and like the the subject matter that they do is like super fun because they they have kind of a, a new twist on things so um if you if this is something that you might want to you know throw a couple bucks to we just want to make sure that you get the opportunity so go and find the link and support our coach yeah and it's indiegogo.com and and uh it's it is pretty indie they're only looking to raise like 10 grand like yeah. it's not like they're trying to get you know six million dollars it's not the mystery science theater 3000 reboot it's you know it's just some some guys trying to make them make a little movie so so go help them out yeah coach nicolette had an interesting uh post the other day on her social media channels yeah so i don't i don't know if you know this about coach nicolette tom but um her uh her fiance Uh um he makes really cool unique furniture okay so if you're looking at our youtube channel right now for the listener uh you will see a large egg in a hand in the middle of her living room it's like a coffee table but it looks like a hand yes and then a and then I guess another like, like a. Um, it's like a tray, like a that goes on the couch. Yeah. And it's an egg. Isn't that fun? It's very stylized. Yeah, it's an end yeah. table. It doesn't go on the couch. It's an end table. Yeah. I'm sorry. And I was always trying. I couldn't think of the word end table. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, what is the name of the table that sits at the end of the couch? Oh, it's an end table. I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, and it apparently also made the cabinet that you're looking yes. at in that thing. So he's yes. very handy. Yeah. And so um, I guess he is uh, transitioning to go from like full-time job to now full-time making this. Ooh. So uh, I just wanted to point this out so that if you, if anybody out there is interested in this amazing art that you go support him yeah. because it's super cool and it's useful i love art that's useful like for real that yeah. <laughs> it's amazing and that's just really cool looking <laughs> and then uh coach jackson was supposed to be uh getting married yeah their uh original wedding date to uh anya i believe it's Ostroy. um uh they were supposed to get married on 4 23 21 and uh because of covid right heard of it right they had to delay things but uh they posted on the socials that they still went to their wedding venue with friends and mm-hmm. like they got dressed up and they had a nice day there yeah and uh, now their new wedding date is january 20th of 2022 so awesome. congrats to them and i think it's really cool that they celebrated like that yeah you totally. know still make it a special day yeah try to make the best of it mm-hmm. except oh now poor coach jackson why he's got like two anniversaries to remember <laughs> now <laughs> like she's got like in like in like seven years <laughs> on April 23rd at about nine o'clock at night, <laughs> she's going to be like, did you forget anything? <laughs> anything, uh, anything important today? And he's like, you're supposed to get milk. Is it your, it's not your birthday? She's going to be like, it's our anniversary. And he's like, no, but no, it's not. I would mean, we got married. What? Oh, man, that one, too. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Well, they'll work through it. <laughs> That's what people do. Tonal celebrity sightings. I can't remember if we talked about this before, but uh, personally, I never pass up a cha- an opportunity to talk about Neil Patrick Harris. I know, uh, <laughs> I know, I know that you don't. And and Tim Shaughnessy, one of our fellow tonalites, yes. and fellow pelotonians yes also loves neil patrick harris and uh and he how do you he, not love neil patrick i know harris? i really don't know who doesn't That's like oh i also love ice cream but but i'm like, sure there's somebody out there who doesn't probably just based on odds yeah but anyway I think it's like a way that they suss out like sociopaths oh that could if you be. don't love ne- neil patrick Harris. that could be that's like a little, a little litmus test right well regardless uh, he was practicing magic or whatever he was doing here. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> he was uh, he was uh, p- uh, promoting uh, a, an Oscars pre party thing, and then he's he's getting ready to do the thing, and then like magic happens and it scares him. It's funny if you watch it with the sound on, but uh, but yeah, and but his tonal is in the background the whole yeah. time. 
<laughs> I love him. I yeah. love him. <laughs> He's so adorable. So I think we already knew that he had a tonal. Well, I, I know like, we knew he had a Peloton. I don't yeah. remember knowing for sure he had a tonal, but maybe. It came up like he was mentioned randomly in an article a while back, I think. But if well, it's been a while. That could but, be. But that could be. Is, Photographed with it yeah. so we know we Now know. we have photographic evidence That he has a tonal and if you're Watching on YouTube top hat And a cane but I think it was probably already A given that Neil Patrick Harris Had a top hat and a cane uh, yeah. yeah He's <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris <laughs> New tonal content so as usual there is tons of new content tons uh, my favorite I am super excited about is this new program by coach Natalie called advanced five by five okay um, and I'm not going to bother explaining to you because it's too much she tried to explain it's it to too me much and I did not get it at all so <laughs> for the rest of you out there it's it's a it's a new it's not new it's new for tonal to be able to give you an advanced kind of weightlifting uh, it, this is this is something that's been done forever though in the weightlifting world so it's really cool to see okay. it on tonal that's really the important sure. takeaway and um, people that know what they're doing will be excited to see this yeah but the great thing about tonal is right like it doesn't matter if you explain if i explain to you and you understand or not because you're still going to be able to do it you know what I'm saying? Because like the it, machine says now do this, exactly. and it doesn't matter so if you, you understand don't, it. You totally. don't need me to explain yeah. it, and that's the beauty of tonal. <laughs> <laughs> like just go do what it tells you to do. Just Tom. Shut up and do what the machine says. <laughs> um, and then uh, I just want to point out um, that the May Community Challenge is going to be revolving around this new program that just dropped, Coach Natalie's Advanced Five by Five. So. If you love the classic method, you're going to love this challenge because you're going to be able to do an entire month of it. There's going to be virtual group workouts. There's going to be Facebook Live Q&As with Coach Natalie. Um, and you're going to get access to 31 days of workouts that are going to complement the program. And of course, a group filled with camaraderie and tonal support. So if you want to join, go to Coach Natalie's Advanced 5x5 Challenge on Facebook, and uh, we'll include um, this in our show notes. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. If you're able to keep up with the challenge, you know, if it's something that works with your schedule, go do that. You know, there's that restaurant that we love here. It's like a little diner called Uncle Bill's. Yes. And... The, I don't know what that has to do with this, but the, I love Uncle Bill's. The, the breakfast I always get when we go there... It's is the four by four is by the four, four by four. So the whole time we're talking about five by five, I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I want scrambled eggs and bacon and it is dinner time and hash browns. Mm, hash oh, browns. <laughs> I remember food like that. Do you remember pancakes? Oh, they were great. Oh, pancakes. I miss you, pancakes. Let's never fight again. So uh, there's also other cool new workouts coming. The new quick fit. Uh, full body finisher with Coach Pablo. It's an advanced full body 14 minute workout that you're going to it's going to get your entire body worked out. There's also a new bar. There's get this no floor bar, which is perfect for people who don't like to do floor workouts like sit on the floor workouts. OK, uh, so that's awesome. Love that they are including that. It's like, where would you stand? <laughs> uh, and then most exciting that just dropped. That's uh -huh. why it's most exciting. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going away from any of the other content. I don't have sure. favorites here, but it just dropped before we started recording. Uh -huh. I'm so glad that Kate posted this like two seconds before we hit record. Yeah. Um. But new Tony Horton workouts. Six new ones just dropped, and so we've got. It's you can so you can do them separately. Or you could do them all together and kind of create your own little mini program. Ah. Um, so there's dynamic chest and back, shoulders and arms, leg pumper, upper body blast, total body knockout, and cardio core crusher. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I know people have really been enjoying those uh, Tony Horton workouts that dropped a few months ago. Gotcha. New tonal features. We also have some interesting mobile updates to talk about. We do. So... Um, if you really like to get granular with your strength score and you want to know how much you've gained throughout time, okay, this is perfect for you because now you can do it by body region. So you know how they have like a lower uh, lower body card, uh, core and an upper body strength score? Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see where you're at. Well, now you can look at it over time. So you can see like, okay, well, overall my strength score is blah, but but like... 
how much is my upper body really increased? And okay. that, so like I have more of an increase in my upper body than my lower body because my lower body was already stronger than yeah. my upper body. So it's like interesting to see how those different parts kind of come together. So and that's I really guess, cool. I guess it would probably show you too if you're favoring yeah, your exactly. upper body over your lower body or vice, vice versa. And if you're like, you know, if you're fixated on your streak score and you don't like where it's at, like maybe like, oh, well, I need to maybe... I'll see more more gains if I work in this other area. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the other really cool thing that dropped for people who love their Apple watches and you have an Apple watch now tonal workouts will only be counted once in Apple Health. So as soon as you get your mobile app all connected to Apple Health and make sure it's all updated. Boom you're going to have it only hit once. So it was it was adding twice for people. And some people were getting double calories and some people weren't. Oh. Um, but but now it only goes once to Apple Health. So thank you to you awesome software superheroes, as as Kate would say. Thank you guys for doing that. Um, and I know a lot of people are going to be super, super stoked for that. Totally. Checking in with the latest tonal transformations. Uh, this time it spotlights Jennifer Winter. Yep. And uh, Jennifer talks all about it, her transformation because that's what this is all about sure. so she had pre-diabetes high blood pressure and high cholesterol and she realized she had to do something to live longer and healthier for her family so in 2019 she started eating better started working out and while all that helped it was actually when her tonal arrived that the magic happened how about that Look at that. Yeah, I know if you're just listening you can't see it but if you check out our YouTube channel it's uh the the difference the transformation is truly stunning yeah like congratulations to jennifer winter and that's good i also am pre-diabetic so it's important to do that stuff. it is important to do that and then finally uh coach jared was uh featured on the tonal blog mm -hmm. talking about uh the, how he discovered a strength to find a new passion yeah he he was really um into i think it was baseball i know he had a sport that he was super yeah, it was baseball, into i believe and um and then he he just kind of as he got older it just started to feel like he, it wasn't his passion anymore he just yeah. he really he felt like it wasn't his place given mm -hmm. that it's such a um uh, what's the word like it's, it's so white dominated yeah and and he didn't really feel like he belonged that that the fellow players kind of made a point to always make him make it make him feel like hey we know you're different and oh. you know yeah yeah um and so you know when he left um he he had to find out and he was really like in the top of his his game like it was, i don't i don't know that much about baseball and he yeah. goes through his story but like at his school he was at a school and he was like at the top of that division and mm -hmm. it was the top division so yeah. he was he was at the top of his game right so it was a very difficult choice for him to leave but then it was like well now now what do i do if i'm not going to do this other thing and um so it 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 was this whole article or this blog post is about how did he figure out how to move forward? And he started with fitness because playing baseball is what helped him realize that he was good at fitness. You got to be in shape. Yeah. And uh, so he he also realized that as he was playing, as he had been playing baseball, he was always the fittest guy on the team. He loved helping his teammates. And so he realized that since he liked movement and working with people, that maybe being a trainer would be a good thing for him. And look where he is now. Yeah. It looks like he uh, chose wisely. It does. It does look like that. I thought that was a, a really cool story. And, you know, I love hearing like where coaches come from and totally. how they get there. And I just so many of them seem to have kind of fallen into it. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't seem like very many of them set out to be like, I want to be a fitness coach. It's like they were doing these other things and then they and then they and just life. kind of drifted into it. Yep. You know? Life happens. Exactly. Checking in with the total team. So joining us today via the magic of Zoom Tube is Tracy Dingman. Hey, Tracy, how's it going? Hi, how are y'all? Good. Good. So we were talking before this started, and we stopped her mid track. Yeah, we were we like, don't, we don't do this very often. We were like, <laughs> shut up, <laughs> and and let's have this conversation during the show. It was fascinating. So yeah. you, so you're an attorney, yeah, and and but that's not the fascinating part. There's lots of attorneys, yes, but, but uh, you have a special story. But you finished law school at 50 uh-huh that's so i was always a late bloomer and i blame my father okay um so i graduated undergrad 40 
and then I went to law school and then I quit. Okay. Um, decided I just couldn't do it and it was too much with raising three kids. And so then I went back after being out of law school for six years, which is not the way to do it. No, right. That's, yeah. And I'm back in law school day one and you're getting called on it. I'm in evidence and I'm thinking, what have I done and why have I done this? <laughs> but I had three boys and I kept giving my children lectures about once we signed up, we commit and we don't quit. And so there was no way <laughs> I could quit law school again and go home and face my children. Um, and so I suck it out and graduate law school. So I'm just curious. Right old age of 50. Wow, that's amazing. So the, I'm just curious. Um, that's pretty badass. How far into law school were you when you stopped going? I had done my first year. Okay, so, how, so how many early. years? Your second year, and you don't really remember your first year. So how many years? So it's are sort of like school? if you had done math, and then all of a sudden you left. Yeah. yeah. And then you went back. So I mean, it was rough. I bet. It, you know, it wasn't a fun time, but um, I did it. Graduated with honors. You know, studied. So you didn't just do it. A lot of time at soccer practices and football practices with books because yeah. I still had three kids, and you still have all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, and then how long is the law part of getting Education. a law degree? Yeah, I don't know this. It takes three years. It's three, three years. Okay. Okay. So, so you wow. still had two to go. Good job. And were you were you working too? No. Okay, I that's good. Working. That's so good. So then I went and took my bars, and my theory was if I pass, if I failed the bar exam, because it's a three day exam in Texas, it was like I was just going to lie to my children. <laughs> Because <laughs> like, I was not going home and telling my children I failed the bar exam. I was just going to be, oh, I didn't want to be an attorney. Never mind. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily, I passed the bar exam. Phew. My kids are never listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I promise you. I, like, our, we've done 200. No, we've done 200 of the other one. We've done 25 20, is, of no, these. No, this is 21. This yeah. is episode 21. They're not going to listen to any 23. of it. They don't, they don't listen when you're talking to they them. They don't. They're not going to go true. out of their way to listen Mm-mm. to you. They're not going to search you out. Here's what will happen. One day when we're long gone. All of us. Our children will miss us. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, oh, I wonder. they did that podcast. Let me and look that up. And then they'll pull it out and they'll be like, can you believe her? <laughs> How are we just now finding this out? And I'll tell you, the <laughs> ghost from the past will tell you right now. It's because you didn't listen. She told you all this stuff. You didn't listen. They're going to hear this in the year like 20, 2082. And they're going to be like, son of a bitch, he's so right. So, <laughs> Well, we have something in common because I graduated from college at 45. I didn't get a law degree. I got a mass comm degree, which is, I mean... Who Not are we the kidding? same. Like I'm now qualified to be a waiter in 38 states, but <laughs> but uh, but I did. I, I went back. At, yep. At, he had he had one class had one left class to do. One class left to take. <laughs> and uh, so he finished that yeah. class. Yeah. So what interrupted your collegiate journey that you that you didn't complete your undergrad? She said it was too ask. hard. The undergrad part. Oh, um, the undergrad part. Sorry. I was just burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. In reality, because I finished well. I started my undergrad like after high school back in the 70s mm-hmm. and my dad was adamant that I went to school and I didn't want to go to school so I would start and drop out start and drop out and so I finally just quit and finally I was honest with my father who <laughs> was just like no and then years later you know I decided I wanted to get my undergrad because um I started doing victim service work and oh, then I wow. decided I wanted to be a prosecutor and so I went back in um, and got my undergrad, and then I think trying to finish my undergrad because I started going to school. My kids would go to Mother's Day out, you know, and you're juggling things. Or I sure. would do on Saturdays when my husband would watch the kids, and you know, like lots of women do. And um, finished it, and then a week after I finished my undergrad, I started law school. And it was just law school's rough, you know, let alone law school and three kids. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And just, you know, couldn't do it. It was like, why do I have to read all these books? And why do I have to learn all these words? And <laughs> it just, you know, I was used to making straight A's and you think you're fairly bright and you go into a top law school and it's like, well, everybody's in Phi Beta Kappa and they have their PhDs and there was a surgeon and there's people with their masters. <laughs> and I'm just like, a surgeon and okay. a lawyer? What that's. Yeah, why? That's why. Now what, you're just what are showing you off. doing? <laughs> 
I know. So it's, you know, you get into a really competitive program and you have to be 110%. And yeah. I just, you know, I needed a break. So I totally understand the that. The best part about being a surgeon and a lawyer is if you screw up and kill somebody, you can sue yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's a win-win. Uh, so are you are you happy as an attorney now? Like, are you glad you went through the process? So now I'm retired. No, right? So <laughs> I, yeah. Um, yeah, I did. I went uh, back to law school. And when I quit in between, I worked for the Texas Legislative Council. And so I really got involved. And through sitting through tons and tons of committee hearings, I found I really liked the story, not necessarily about law, but what was the reason behind the law? Because there's always a really cool backstory. Sure. And so I, um, I did that for a number of years. And then that made me want to go back to law school. And then I really got into criminal law and liked it and um, didn't want to be a defense attorney and decided I didn't really want to be a prosecutor. So instead, I worked for the prison system which is um, a totally different thing. So I did that in Texas for 10 years and then worked for the legislative part of it. So it was sort of around and then I decided I was just, you know, I was done. I was going to go travel and did that for a couple of years. And wow, um, that's a that's 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 like a really cool, like circuitous route to get where you wanted to. I mean, like you just kind of decided to do things and then went and did them. But I think there's a great lesson in all of that. I do too. Because so many times people are like, I'm too old to change or to do something different. Right. And and it's and like it's funny. I remember doing that at the age of like 25. I wanted my dream. I always wanted to work in radio and I and I got offered an internship and I was like, I was like 25. The other interns were like 19. And I'm like, am I, I'm too old to do that. And I was just like, but that's dumb. It's what I want to do. Like, mm-hmm. why would I say no to that? And so, and then somebody I worked with who was older than me was like, I would have thought I was too old, but if you're doing it, can you get me an internship? That was Mary, right? And Mary, Mary. And she still works in radio to this day. There's only like three people left that work in radio, but she's one of them. <laughs> so how about that? So, yeah, it's funny because my kids are now in their thirties and they're like, oh, I have to have my life planned out because, you know, I'm 30 and I'm like, what? No, (laughs) No, so you don't, you know, what we've tried to tell my kids is especially when they're trying to figure out what they want to do is when you're not supposed to know what you want to do when you're 18. Yeah. You know, that's just sort of life. Right. And the school will always be there. And, and, you know, when you're ready, go to school. But if you're not ready, don't go to school, you know, for one, it's really expensive. And then you have to live with those grades and make that commitment. It's good to have goals, but you don't want to be so locked in that you can't discover new things. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fine balance because some kids, you know, if they don't go to school right away, they're never going to go to school. And so you have to it's 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 you have to really look at it for each individual person and see what their motivations are, Um, because if they're if because some people can get stuck in life and not do anything. You know, you you clearly were a very determined, ambitious person and you were like, "Well, I'm going to go do this." And then you went and did it. But a lot of people, they'll they'll also be like, "I want to go do that." And then they they get scared and they won't take the next steps to go do it. Um, I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing. I think it's really brave that you did that and really awesome you didn't let any of those fears get in your way. Yeah. Um, you know, I really like Christina on Peloton. Yeah. And she always talks about, um, I went and did Kilimanjaro when I was 62. Whoa. And I kept thinking, why did I tell anybody <laughs> that I was going to go do this when I trained? Why did I tell anybody? But I kept hearing her talking about, well, what if you can? You know, what if you can? And that's what I kept telling myself. And that's sort of, you know, I think when people are trying to struggle and they're, you know, afraid. Um, to go out and you're afraid to embarrass yourself or you're afraid you're going to fail or, you know, whatever that is that's holding you back. It's just, you know, but what if you can? I think that's awesome. I know. <laughs> Kill him in jar. Holy cow. It's got kill right in the name. <laughs> like that's, I know. Yeah. I mean, they're not burying the lead. It's right there on Front Street. Like that's 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 the real deal. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think you just became my new hero. I know. You're pretty awesome. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, we wasted time with a stupid college story. We could be talking about Kilimanjaro. <laughs> <laughs> Those are impressive feats, both of them. They seriously. are. They are. But we're, we're going to we're going to come back yeah. to Kilimanjaro because uh, I want to hear how you first found out about Tonal and then made the jump to decide to buy it. 
actually, when I told you, I heard it on your podcast. <laughs> it was on the clip out. You talked about the total. It started to feel like I needed to keep up with the Joneses because it was like, well, she's got one. <laughs> and so I had heard it and started looking into it. And I think part of what you learn, and we, we used to live in Austin. And then now we live in a small town okay. that doesn't really have a gym. And one of the things I think is when you go through menopause, you want to lift heavy. And when you don't have, you know, there's a gym here, but it is a small town gym. And then COVID hit. And mm. so I knew I still wanted to lift heavy and I'm fairly small. So for me to jump from 15 to 20 pounds is a big, huge jump, yeah. especially with my upper body. And I tried to find 17 pound weights and I couldn't find them forever. And that was one of the things I had thought, well, maybe Tuttle will let me do that because I can control my weight. And that was one of the things I really found I liked about it because I could go up by one pound. And when you're sort of playing, you know, especially at my size, going up two pounds when I'm doing arms on one side is a lot of weight. Yeah, it is. So it was really great for that. So, so what is your, um, what is your fitness journey been? Like, do you have, have you always lifted weights? Um, obviously you use Peloton. So I know Peloton appeared in your journey, but like what I was like, not an active person when I was younger and I didn't start getting active until I was in my thirties. So like, what what did it look like for you going through life? Have you always been an active person and have you always been using weights or is that something that's more recent? No. Um, I think when I grew up, I swam, but that was, I grew up in the Air Force. And so we moved every year when I grew up. And so, you know, back in the early 70s, I, d- I don't remember women's sports being like they are today. Yeah, that's true. Um, they weren't because it was then, Title IX was under the Nixon administration, if memory serves. So, like, that was right yeah. in that. that And it still took a, a while for it to kind of come to fruition in terms of actually impacting things. Yes. Yeah. And so I started going back to the gym probably when I was in my 30s. And it was to the point where it was okay to go to the gym and not feel guilty about leaving your kids because you'd already been to work all day. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so I started working out that way. And then I got into running when I was, so like at 53, I decided to run my first half. <laughs> so I started getting into halves and was running and I was getting ready to go do a marathon and I kept getting beat up just from running yeah. and I wasn't lifting weights. And so I went back in to lift weights to try to balance, to not beat up from getting running all the time. And so I think that was when I started. So that was probably 10 years ago that I started lifting weights. And then I started working with a trainer and then in Austin, they had small groups. So instead of a private trainer, it was you and four other people. Okay. So I went to the gym every morning at four or five in the morning. And I would work out um, because in Austin, you have to be on the road, you know, by seven or you're in traffic or you're not going to get there. (laughs) So, you know, I would go lift weights for an hour before and go into work. And then I've I've done two a days a lot. And so then I would go back to the gym after work, especially when the kids were all gone. Wow. And I'd go back and go do Pilates or go do, you know, whatever. And then I would also lift individually with a trainer Um, because I could do heavy on certain days. And then I did that through there. And then I came, well, we moved into the smaller town. They had personal trainers, but they were all college kids, which, you know, had grown up athletically and and knew their stuff, but they quit every three months. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, as college kids do. (laughs) Um, and so I started lifting on my own at that point and, you know, would do some of the Peloton strength things. But, and I really, really I like Andy's classes and I like them a lot, but I found, um, I think as you get older, you, your balance isn't what it used to be. Oh, that's so true. And so I would want to move at a pace and Andy would move at a faster pace sometimes or Jess's I really like Jess's boot camps yeah but I just felt like I was slinging weights yes. and with tonal I feel like I'm I can move the weights at my speed and it's a lot better workout for yes me, you know? yes it's more deliberate yes yeah. yeah yeah and and because because it's 
tonal like the, so so we want to I mean we want to talk about digital weights versus traditional dumbbells and for me one of the pros of tonal is that not only is it deliberate whenever you're you know you're moving the weight but also I I struggle to know the right weights I should be using with free weights. So especially if it's a timed move and I'm doing it uh, anywhere else like Peloton, um, I don't know. Okay, this eight pound feels really good when I start off, you know, but then it's like, oh, this feels too light. I could probably move up. But then I'm like, well, should I move to a 10? Should I go to a 12? And then by the time I've thought of all that, the minute's up, we've moved on to the next exercise. I missed my opportunity. Yeah. And so, and then I don't remember what did I use last time on this particular move? You know, was it the eight or the 10? I can't remember. And so I just spend so much of my time doing that, that I don't feel like I'm actually focused and enjoying the workout. I, I don't know. Because I like I like the workouts, but it's just, I love the tonal workouts because when I work out with them, it's like, Okay, well, I don't have to think about what is the machine set on. It just does its thing. And if it feels too light, then I can move it up and it remembers that. I don't ha- I don't have to do it. It remembers it. And so that's amazing to me. And I think that's part of what allows me to get a better workout because I spend more of my time lifting instead of worrying about what I'm going to lift, if that makes sense. Yeah. And and I found too, especially when you do a lot of the single leg stuff. You know, because we'd be doing, um, you know, the single RDLs or something, the Romanian deadlift, and I'd be still trying to get my balance and all of a sudden we're done and we're moving. Yes. But with the tonal, I can sort of move more systematically and get through it and do all eight of them or 10 or whatever you're supposed to be doing and and get a whole lot better workout instead of feeling like, you know, I'm going to hit myself in the head because I'm just trying to get through (laughs) and keep up with the guy, you know, with keep up with the Peloton person. Yeah, I totally Um, agree with that. I totally agree with that. What about when you were working out with a trainer? So like compare the tonal working out um, on a a program versus working out with a personal trainer. How do the two compare if you were using free weights? um, I think they're a lot of the same because for the most part, I worked out with a trainer because I, did, I just would have to show up and somebody would go tell me what to do, basically. I didn't want to have to work out with my own program. And so <laughs> yeah. I knew how to do it. It was just, you know, here, Tracy, go do X. And so part of it was just, you know, really expensive being lazy. <laughs> um, but Total does the same thing, especially the programs. Yeah. So it's all laid out for you and you can just, it's it's there. And, it, and it's almost the same thing. And I think... You know, when you work out with a trainer and you're hot and your legs are tired and whatever's going on and he's trying to talk to you, but you're hot and you're tired and it's not really clicking. But with tonal, it seems like I can go back and I'm like, wait, I didn't hear what they said. And you can hit the button and go back and, you know, and hear it and repeat it or have them repeat it and pick it up a little bit better. And I think um, I hear it and especially I was doing something that I was doing a squat the other day and all i could hear was in my head was liz saying you're supposed to have 80 percent of your weight on your front leg and i kept thinking i need to shift because i need to have 80 percent of my weight up (laughs) and and so you know it it really worked out well i've been really 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 impressed about how good it was and i was really hesitant about buying it because all of a sudden i was like you know i'm 64 why am i buying this but now I'm like, no, everybody in their 60s needs one of these because right? you need heavy weights. It's great for your balance. You know, you can go at your pace. Liz has so many classes on people with knee problems. And I love Jared's mobility. And I just, you know, it, the weights are great, but there's so much else that's also great. That's so true. I, uh, I'm i actually doing um, Coach Natalie's Balancing Act. I was trying to think of the name of the program. And um, that program just came out. And I'm really loving it because it's all single-sided moves. And it's all focused on, you know, creating that balance that it, it literally even the warm-ups and everything are all about how to fall correctly and how to how – to, um, 
be make sure that your body is ready for any plane of motion that it's going to be in. And um, I love that because I do find I mean, even in even in my 40s, I'm starting to find that like, it's not as easy to catch myself if I start to fall or um, I might I might um, not have my balance, I might be paying attention to something else and not be able to re- respond as quickly as I used to in my 20s whenever mm-hmm. something's happening. So I think it's I think it's great to be able to have those things. And um, I think I think balance is a lot more important as people age than we realize. And when I was doing my personal training certificate, that was a huge thing that they said for for anyone who is older to be doing balance and that that actually anybody of any age can do all of the same exercises that we all do, like when we're working out, they just might need to start with balance because that's where they need to get grounded and comfortable before they start lifting a weight and putting it above their head you know if they don't have a lot of balance so even somebody who's in their 80s wanting to work out with with weights you can start with one of these balance programs and build up to be able to do all of those other those other things and i think that's really key to a lot of it yeah the other thing i found out that i liked about tunnel was um the spotter because I was doing one of the weights and it was like on the third round through it and my arms were just not going to go up. Mm-hmm. Been there. And <laughs> all of a sudden it kicked in and I was like, and at first you're like, oh crap, I failed. And, and then you're like, no, this is great because it means I pushed to the point that my arms were just not going to go anymore. That's right. And the system did what it was supposed to and I didn't hit myself in the head. You know, where if I had been lifted a free weight and you go up and all of a sudden your arms just stop, you know, you have the chances of just smacking yourself with it. Well, so yeah. And I if, thought that was really great. If you're like me, you probably wouldn't have done that. Like you probably wouldn't have gotten to the point where it was exhausting, you know, because it's like as yeah. soon as it started to hurt, you'd be like, and That's on to the next machine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It makes you push because you can see how many you have to go and you're like, well, I got one more round and that's what they told me to do. So I'm going to do it. Whereas if you just rely on yourself, I mean, some people have the discipline to go and do all those things and good for them. But if you don't have the self-discipline, having that counter in front of you makes all the difference in the world for me because I know it's this much I got to do and it's prescribed. Yeah. And therefore I will do it. Yeah. I mean, that's what I like about the programs is that like, as you were saying earlier, you don't, you don't got to think about it. Like it just. That's what I'm doing today, and that's that's the end of it. But, and I was also thinking when you're talking about older people and balance. I mean, if you think about it, like what what do you always hear, like taking out an older person, uh, falling and breaking, falling their and hip. breaking a hip. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. You know, I mean, it's what took out my grandma. It is. I mean, we couldn't. She broke her hip and came, and came back the first time. Mm-hmm. She was like 90, and we were like, holy cow! Like right. that. We didn't think that that was going to be a thing, and then it happened again at 95, and you not. Know, yeah. She didn't bounce back quite as fast no. in 95. <laughs> so that was, yeah, but I think that's a big thing. And yeah. rehab, one, I remember one time when I was listening to a tonal program, one of the instructors said that all, or maybe it was a tonal talk even, <laughs> they said they said that all rehabilitation, everything you do when you hurt yourself comes from strength it's always if you if you hurt a muscle if you break a leg and you're coming back for and learning how to use it it's all about strength and thinking about all the different things that tonal can do it just kind of became a no-brainer to me that I absolutely needed one in my life (laughs) as I get older I want to have that strength program going on so I think that's pretty cool yeah so do you feel like you would like have zero need for free weights in your life anymore is it all tonal for you or do you still feel like there's some some times when you would still want to use a, a, a regular old school weight um the one classes i go back to is still on peloton are the core classes yeah um mainly because if i just want to do core for like 10 minutes it's a whole lot easier just bring it up on my television and go grab an out eight pound weight and do it um and so I still use them for that, but I wouldn't, you know, do Andy strength classes anymore where before I'd gone through them a couple times. No, I think I get such a better workout and I can go heavier than anything I own at the house. I think it's, um, I don't know about you, Tracy, but I think it's so funny that like I will do, 
I've tried doing like an arm segment in the middle of a bike, like a cycling class. And I used to, by the end of them, feel like burnt out, like my muscles were just so burnt out with my three pound weights. And now I'm like, this is nothing. <laughs> this is so light. <laughs> it's like I've really gotten I know. and noticeably stronger with tonal. And I, as much as I love Peloton, I don't think I was ever getting strong. I never got noticeably stronger muscles with tonal. I mean, with Peloton compared to tonal. No, because I was doing, I don't know, somebody's class the other day and it was do push-ups. And it used to be if I could get to seven push-ups, I was like really happy. And all of a sudden I was doing 12 and 13 and I was like, <laughs> oh, wow, this is really cool. And a month later and um I went and got my second back seat shot yesterday and the woman kept going, relax your shoulder, relax your shoulder. And I'm like, no, look, I've been doing this. <laughs> like, this is relaxed. <laughs> yeah. I'm just that and ripped. I have a, <laughs> yeah. Sorry I broke your needle. So, yeah. It was like, but you should get a Peloton or a total look. Um, you know, I don't think I'd go back to Peloton except for, you know, I really like their core stuff. But I also really like I guess I like within the program when you do in a class and they have core within part of that is tonal. They're really good because I can really tell like on my on the sides and everything how much um, stronger they're getting. But I think to just go do a core class on tonal is, you know, I can do it a whole lot faster on Peloton. And yeah. it's probably just from being lazy. I get that. I get I don't tend to add them on. I tend to do more of the full body workouts on tonal that include them to your point. And I like I like the tonal moves that include core. And I think I think that I like those more than like the off machine moves like the ones that you do, like, for example, um, like a what is it called? The bird dog with row mm -hmm. and like where you balance on the bench and then like you know also row at the same time I love yeah. how strong my core feels when I do those I just think that that's like I think that's my favorite core exercise on the tonal I hate pullovers hate them <laughs> I can't do those I mean for the life of me and I keep going back I keep getting a lighter and lighter <laughs> um, trying to just pull from back and up and it just I don't know what and so I just find the wines where you do the resistant and you hold your arms up and, yep. you, and you do your legs and lower them that way. Yeah. Is the ones that work so much better. Yeah. I probably need to watch one of those uh, five minute moves where they break down, like where tonal instructors will break down the different moves on those pullovers because those are those are really heck for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know where heck came I know. from. I was like, I cuss all the time. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tracy just seems so sweet. I don't want I don't know. <laughs> She's a lawyer. And she worked in the yeah. prison system. I, I don't know. She brings out the niceness in me. I don't know what's happening. You're not going to shock her. I assure you. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. So is there um do you feel like you can get the same workout from free weights and tonal, or do you think it depends on the person? I think I get a better workout out of tunnel than I do out of free weights that I think there's a security with doing tunnel. There's even when I'm doing one leg, one leg stuff that my balance is a lot better and it may be because you're holding two handles, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I definitely get a better workout out of tunnel. So how do you, uh, how, how do you find you're working it in with your Peloton? Is that, fairly even is one kind of winning is one falling by the wayside no so i like i said is i'm retired and i have time yeah and my husband does all the cooking oh, nice. and grocery shopping and dishes in case you know you would like to take that over in your family to who ah, and i'm so, so jealous <laughs> yeah so i usually do two a days i'll go do you know, cardio in the morning or straight training in the morning. And then I'll go do the Peloton or there's days I'll go do straight training and then do whatever for a couple hours. And then I went and did like the Dixie chicks. So I guess they're the chicks now, Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, they had a ride and a run. So then I went and did 30 minutes on the bike and then I just walked next door and did, you know, walked over to the thing and got on the tread and did 30 minutes on the tread or um, stuff and so I just stack things. I I hike a lot, and so I'm getting ready to go on a hike. And so I've been trying to do the tread because where I live, 
if I walk six miles outside, I can get a 500 foot elevation. Um, so it's rolling hills, but it's not really a let's go climb mountains. Yeah. And so I'll go do the tread um, and just try and stay between like 10 and 15. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's intense. Those um, I love those Rebecca Kennedy uh, hikes. Those are some of my favorites. The first one I t- first time I did one of her 45 minute hikes, I was like, oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. Your booty yeah. feels every bit. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but they're really good. So, uh, so I'll go. To, yeah, I'll do her hikes. So does your husband use any of this stuff or? No. Good for him. <laughs> Man after my own heart. <laughs> Not any of it. Oh, wow. I think he tried the bike once and decided he didn't like it. I don't think he's ever been on the tread and. Does he, he not like touch the tunnel? Does he not like exercise at all, or is does he just do his own thing? He'll he goes hiking on some of the uh, less intense hikes that we do. So we used to travel a lot. Um, we would use we usually would go to Europe every year and go mm-hmm. hike. Miss those and days. so he would, you know, get in shape enough to go to go to Europe and hike for a week. Uh, but it's not really his thing. I can tell by the look on your face that you're dismissive of that definition of get in shape. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try and just, yeah, we've been married almost 40 years. So it's a and lot of so uh, compromises. Now I'm, I just come in going, you know, okay, I signed up for another hike and he's like, okay. And so we are getting ready to maybe we'll do a remodel job last year. And I was like, hey, I'm going to go to Georgia and hike for a week. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, wow, you're the greatest husband ever because we just had a brand new puppy and we were doing the remodel. And I was leaving to go hike. And then I thought, well, now I'm offended because do you not like me? (laughs) (laughs) He's like, what do you mean? Yeah, okay, leave. But he's really, he's really great and he's supportive and, you know, he lets me go off and and go hike around the world and see if he's like me he's looking at us like oh cool i'll stay home and do all this stuff because i get out of hiking <laughs> like i don't have to hike now that's a win-win yeah okay. i mean you know when i went to and did kilimanjaro he was more like because i every day i would text because i had a garmin thing and i would say we're here and i'm okay and then all of a sudden you summited and i quit texting and so three days later i'm talking to him and he's like, what happened to you? And I was like, well, I summited. So who cares after that? that was it. And he's like, I didn't know if you were alive. And I'm like, oh, yeah, but I summited. Who cares? But no, you, you, they, they, I mean, I've, I've read about mountain climbing. Yeah. And like, like on, and I've read books about Everest. And so, but like, that's the most dangerous point because so many times people, when they climb mountains, they don't pace themselves going back down from an energy standpoint and they like get to the top and then it's like oh shit we got to turn around and go back down and like that that can be that's when a lot of people get hurt or god forbid get killed because like they're so focused on getting to the top that they're just like they don't conserve the energy right needed and to now get it's back. like oh i kind of yeah, got to yeah. do it all again backwards how long does it take to uh walk kilimanjaro or how long did it take um, for you? I'm it's sure it's a week. different. It's a week. I so, thought it was really long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like five days up and then you fly going down, which to me was the worst part of it because going up, I mean, usually anytime I, I hike going down, it's always the hardest on your knees and hardest on your quads. Yeah. But, um, so, and, and plus you've already reached your goal. Right. There's nothing right. to look forward to. Yeah, like that's, and that's kind of it. Like psychologically, you're like, well, I've done it now. Yeah. And then your focus isn't the yeah. same. Yeah. Yeah. And you still have to climb down 13,000 feet. You're right. like, but, but I'm done. They should put in a slide. <laughs> I keep trying to tell them I needed champagne strawberries at a helicopter. Yeah. That would be amazing. How, how much uh, did your pack weigh? Because I assume you had to have a pack to, to carry. No, because they have porters. So you're oh. carrying, you know, a day pack. Okay. You're carrying your water and your brain gear. Um, well, that's and, great. You know, clothes like that. So, and then actually the night you summited, you didn't carry anything. You had the company that I went with, you had a one-on-one porter. And so your porter carried his pack and your pack. <laughs> wow. Um, and then you just, you know, you just had to climb. 
That's fabulous. Yeah. I went backpacking once and, uh, well, there's a reason I went once. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I decided that a 70 pound pack was not my friend and I did not like it. Yeah. Yeah. I do a lot of, um, day hiking where you hike all day and then you go back to the bar and have a shower. Yeah. I like that. That's, that's more yeah. my speed and you can, you know, pee in a toilet instead of in a hole. <laughs> well, you still have the woods. <laughs> Yeah, but you still have red wine at night. So. Okay, okay. All right. I can deal with that much, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, congratulations yeah, on that. That is quite an achievement. Yeah. Sheesh. Can't I mean, even imagine. it's an achievement at any age, but in your 60s, like that's, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hat wow. tip. Yeah, it was great because I did that and then I came back. So like in 2019, I just traveled and hiked. And so I did Kilimanjaro and I came back. And I went to Virginia and hiked for a week, and then I came back, and then I went to Nepal <laughs> and hiked in Nepaul, uh, which I, is really intense. Can I just come travel with and you? So that was see? it. Was great. I, so I, I mean, you know, and, and so for me, what drives my working out is for one, I I tend to be very goal driven. I know you can't tell, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you always have a if you always have a hike, or if you always have a race, or you always have a something. And you've ever done any of those and not worked out, you realize how miserable it is. But if you work out, then there's so much more fun. And so I always, you know, tend to sign up for something. And so it makes me go work out. If you ever need so, a travel buddy, Saturday I leave. just let me yeah, know. So you Saturday can... I leave to go hike um, for a week in Tennessee. Wow. And you... so every time I'm like, oh, I don't want to go work out. I'm like, no, you're going on this hike. <laughs> Got to be ready. Well, she doesn't need a travel buddy, honey, but you could be her porter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, just just think red wine. You know. <laughs> oh, your adventures sound amazing, Tracy. Yeah, wow. they do. That's that's awesome. It is. So, uh, do you have any advice for people who are new to the tonal community? What I did is before I got it, I did. A part of it's probably just for being anal retentive. It's I went and did Andy's program before I got it because I kept reading about people that were really sore. Yeah. Oh. And that's my dog. <laughs> Through the time I've I lifted hope. weights enough <laughs> that when you go jump in, you realize how sore you get. And oh, so right. I didn't want to do that with tonal. So I lifted weights for a while so I could go do tonal and not be sore. Um, but the other thing I really enjoyed is the tonal talks. Yes. And they were really good because they had like a whole thing just on how to do a squat. And if, you know, you had tight ankles, this is how to do it. And that was a great resource. Um, I did one of their monthly programs last month, the side by side. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was really good. It was Liz's, but she did, you know, she did four workouts with you, but I didn't necessarily do it when she did, but I could go watch her because she would stop and talk about, well, do this, or, you know, if your arms don't go here, you could move the bar or whatever, and had all these hints that were great with it. And then she did all these Facebook talks that you, they would answer your questions. And it, it just the resources have been amazing. And I'm guessing it's because they're small and they can do that. Well, but it's that it's but been great. It's also that they're uh, very, very focused on, on intentionally creating a community and, uh, you know, companies that aren't doing what Tonal is doing, I find themselves not having the amount of community yeah. that Tonal does because they work really hard at it. And, and, and I applaud them for that. It's amazing. And Kate has a lot to do with that, you know, a lot of ideas yeah. that she comes up with and a lot of things that she does. And, you know, those um, the one that you did for the side by side there, they do those each month. So like uh, April is going to be the uh, great the the glute one with Allison. Yeah. And um, so I think I think what they're what they're doing is awesome because it takes one more thing off of people's plates, especially when you're new. So that was a great tip um, because it's like just show up and do the workouts in the, this order for a whole month and then go from there if you want to do something else do something else but that gives you something without thinking yeah. like here's here's an entire month of a plan it's great I love yeah. it. absolutely and the total uh, and then last night they had their book club that i listened to that was the, the biohack and so i know as you get older you know they really talk about the difference how much of an influence exercise can work on your brain yes um and stop people from getting dementia alzheimer's and and things like that so 
that's part of what also drives, you know, my working out. But it was really interesting listening to the woman speaks. But it just seems they have so many resources if you take advantage of it. And if you're confused, you know, go look at Tunnel Talk because more than likely, you know, they have somebody speaking on it. If you're not sure how to go do something, you know, their main website is actually you know, everybody's nice and there's lots of good information. Yeah. And yes. And oh. I love how they police and moderate there. Yeah. <laughs> and all those tonal talks are good, but uh, but the, the I think they have a really great one coming up. Oh, you do. They're probably the best one ever. It may not. It'll probably have already happened by the time this oh, airs. OK. <laughs> But it's going to be Tom's. Tom's going to. Yeah. But yeah. But it's all it's called Tom's tonal tell all. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That'll be exciting. <laughs> Sounds like I'm in a torrid affair with a tonal. <laughs> well, you kind of are. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Tracy, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we go, uh, where can people find you if you would like to be found? I don't really. I mean, I have a Facebook page that's under my name, but that's about all I do. That's you know, okay. My Instagram that's is fun. mainly me following people that do um, interior decorating or yoga. So. You didn't post any badass Instagram pictures from the top of Kilimanjaro? Surely you did. Come you on. know, my picture on top of Kilimanjaro is with my Peloton shirt, my Century shirt. That's I dragged awesome. it up there. That's amazing. That's awesome. And so I have, it's one of them. I have a couple of different pictures. Yeah. So every time I'm writing Peloton going, fix my stupid bike or fix my tread or fix my whatever, I'm like, look, I dragged your shirt. <laughs> Way to Kilimanjaro. I would think they would like share that or re- yeah. Instagram it or whatever they say over there. Yeah. Well, you know, they didn't used to do that, that kind of thing as much. So I don't know if they did do that, Tracy, but if they didn't, you know, just repost that every once in a while. Yeah, and totally. See, because they should. They're really, they're a lot better about doing that now than they used to be re-Instagramming. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, Peloton was such a big part of my training when I did Kilimanjaro. Bajaro, that, that was part of why I took it. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. This was, uh-huh, this was a lot you. of fun. You've done a lot of fascinating things. You sure have. Wow. I Like I said at the beginning, I'm going to cuss again, just in case you didn't Uh-oh. know. <laughs> Brace yourself. I really think you're a badass. That's pretty cool. <gasps> <laughs> Such language. I okay, now I'm going to make my kids listen. <laughs> Just to that part. <laughs> Just for that. You should sneak Just half their phones seconds. and make that the ringtone whenever you call. I know. Yeah. You should. Because <laughs> you are. Yep. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. What, pray tell, do you have in store for people next week? Uh, next, well, it's going to be two weeks from right. then. As, uh, as I said that, I was like, <laughs> I'm supposed to say next time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so mid-May, uh, we will be talking to Lori Amerson, uh, who is... Uh, a huge inspiration recently hit one million pounds in, and uh, she did that in lifted. less. She's not very heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. She lifted <laughs> a million t- pounds and she did that in like less than a year. So I'm I'm pretty impressed by that. Absolutely. So uh, until then, where can people find you? People can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. Find the show online at facebook.com slash superset podcast. While you're there, like the page, join the group. And of course, be sure and uh, follow us wherever you're getting your podcast from so you never miss an episode. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep lifting. Superset is made possible in part by support from Tonal.